Птичка полетела к вам. Птичка да, к вам полетела? Да. Одна, Разведчик пока. или большая? А, не видно за тучами, высоко сильно. Все, понял, принял. Объявите наверх. It's July 17th, 2014. And Malaysian Airlines flight MH17 is about to take off. For the 283 passengers, including 80 children and 15 crew members, this would be their last flight. The apparent downing of that Boeing 777 is sparking outrage across Europe. Not an accident or a disaster, but an act of terrorism. And a stark reminder tonight that eastern Ukraine is still an active and dangerous war zone. Yet there is no one here trying to work out what happened. No one here to take responsibility for this. To understand what happened to MH17, we must understand the area that it was flying over. The flight path crossed over Ukraine, and this is what the eastern Ukrainian region looked like. Ukrainian government forces on one side fighting a number of separatist groups who controlled territory known as the Donbass. Among the factions fighting was the Besla group who controlled territory along the front lines of the insurgency. The Besla group played a vital role in spotting MH17 before it was shot down. The group was led by a man called Igor Besla. We hear his voice in a recording released by the Ukrainian government. <laughs> This conversation took place on July 17th at 4.18, exactly two minutes before MH17 was shot down. Besler is speaking to a man going by the name of Niamnik. Niamnik is a subordinate of Besler, Valery Stilmark, who is a militia commander. We know this mainly from his social media presence, where he used his call sign as part of his social media name. Another way he can be identified is by his unique voice. Here, in this interview, he is asking Bezla to return to eastern Ukraine. The same voice can be identified as the person on the phone with Bezla on July 17th, 2014. The role he played in the downing of MH17 was a highly significant one, as the phone conversation he had about spotting the plane occurred just two minutes before the plane was shot down at 4.20 by missile launchers. Another important group that we must turn our attention to is the GRU. The main intelligence directorate of the DNR, the Dosniak People's Republic. At the head of the GRU and the DNR is a man by the name Sergei Humare Dubinsky. His identity as a former Russian spy was exposed by a previous investigation. Dubinsky was an important figure in facilitating the transportation of the missile launcher, which was probably made in the western Russian city of Kiersk. Once the missile reached the Ukrainian border, the GRU and the DNR were responsible for transporting the missile to the location where it would shoot down the passenger plane. But the GRU and DNR were not alone. They were aided by one of the many separatist factions to figure out which one, phone conversations between Dubinsky and two of his close subordinates were monitored. In this SBU intercept, Dubinsky is heard speaking to a man whose identity is unknown, but is simply labeled as DNR terrorist. Dubinsky tells him about someone called Gerizov who will join him to guide the Buke missile launcher. This information is crucial. The identity of Girozov can be figured out using his online trail, which include foreign postings, public recordings posted by activists, and screenshot posted by Girozov himself, where he accidentally outs himself. The trail leads to a man called Oleg Pulatov, a high-ranking leader in the GRU DNR. 
To find out Croat's identity, another phone conversation is intercepted. This time it's between Oleg and a man called Leonia. We can figure out who Leonia is by following the online trail, which includes an SBU conversation where somebody identified as Croat is speaking to Igor Strolkov, another leader in the GRU DNR. But perhaps the biggest clue to Croat's identity is an online forum posting from Dubinsky, where he says his real name is Leonid Harchinka, a GRU DNR commander. In another intercepted conversation with a subordinate with the call sign Rezan, helps reveal Harchinka's role in returning the missile to Russia after it was used to shoot down MH17. Based on the recordings and sources presented, there is evidence that Harshinka and Pulatov, under the command of Dubinsky and Strokov, were involved in the transportation of the missile launcher that shot down MH17. The identities of the men presented in this report are new and were exposed in a Bellingcat investigation. It is up to an official investigation to make a final verdict. However, the likelihood of that happening is very slim because of Russia's involvement. For now, the families of almost 300 people are left with no answer as to why their loved ones were shot down in a commercial flight. They deserve answers. Thank you.